Hey class, welcome to week four of Professional Business Presentations. I'm really excited to talk about some of the content this week. We've got our mock interview coming up. We've done our 20 question interview preparation and research. We've done our branding and elevator pitch. So let's bring it all together in the culminating assignment for all the content we've covered so far into the mock interview. So today we're gonna to be covering three main things. The first is dress and attire. Now the question is, isn't this kind of obvious? Just look professional, clean cut, all that. We'll dive into that in greater detail in just a moment. And then we'll cover interviewing, additional interviewing, especially in preparation of your assignment this week, as well as negotiation. But we're going to leave these two sections to the live stream so we can get a little bit more hands-on in preparation of what's to come this week. So make sure not to miss that live stream so you know exactly what to expect for your mock interview, as well as covering some content regarding negotiation. Whether you're negotiating in an interview or once you're hired, you've been there a year or two and you want to negotiate your salary, we're gonna cover that in our live stream this week. Before we dive into dressing your brand, <coughs> excuse me, before we dive into dressing your brand, I wanna share with you what the Woodbury School of Business in general suggests students wear when going to a job interview. And then I'm going to be real with you and I'm gonna tell you what the real world is more tailored to, or rather what is the more effective approach to professionally dressing or picking what type of attire you're gonna wear for a job interview. So let me go ahead and pull that up here on the side. All right, first thing I want you to notice about this photo is the colors. We've got neutrals, mostly navies and charcoals and whites and grays. We do have a little bit of yellow here, but she's on black on black other than that. Very traditional tie. This guy doesn't have one, but he's still got that three-piece suit basically going on. And uh, yeah, so generally, as a rule of thumb, when you think, how should I dress for an interview? This is what the, the standard general guideline is. We're gonna cover what women should wear, again, according to uh, the Woodbury School of Business's general recommendation, broad strokes here, guys. We're, th this is the safest answer that we can give, what should you wear if we know nothing about you? Now, as you do know about this course, I ask you to tailor everything, all of your answers to your specified major and projected career. So take this with a massive grain of salt, and uh, if I take off the, the professor glasses for a sec, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this is pretty outdated. But let's go into why it is a good idea as a general rule of thumb. Okay, so for women, it says, uh, skirt suits are preferred. Appropriate length of skirt is one of those. Okay, obviously, moving on. We have neutral colors, cotton or silk. Apparently, the, uh, the fabric matters. <laughs> not sleeveless, not wrinkled. Definitely don't have wrinkled clothes when you go to a job interview, ladies. This one's my personal favorite. Pumps with a one and a half inch heel. Because if you have a one inch heel, might not get that job, right? Or two inches, heaven forbid. But further down, this one's pretty funny, the stiletto heels. Again, an interesting specification that uh, we decided to throw out there. Again, the colors, neutrals, and then once again, fabric mat mattering here. The leather versus fabric, which actually does make, a, make some sense because the dress shoes that you're wearing definitely do look classier if they're leather, however, I own a pair of half cloth, half or half fabric, half leather, and it's probably the nicest pair of shoes I have. So again, all with a very big grain of salt. Uh, you can read these, I'm not gonna read them for you. Uh, avoid opaque and printed is an interesting specification as well. They, they just want you to be pretty vanilla. With jewelry, this is the recommended safe attire once again. 
If you are applying to work at a law firm or maybe Wall Street type firm or brokerage or something like that, these might be a good recommendation for you. Okay, uh, the pair of earrings, two finger rings or one watch or bracelet. I, I would say a better description of this is try not to distract from your brand or from your messaging by wearing too much of one thing or uh, we'll, we'll get to all that in a sec. We'll, we'll get there in a sec. Now we're just going to cover briefly what men should wear. Again, it's dark colors. Uh, the picture here is pretty self-explanatory. White, off-white, or pale blue, be <laughs> the simpler the better, yep. Uh, I don't know if, how many of you even know how to starch a shirt. I'm, su I'm curious about that. Uh, I personally have never starched a shirt. I don't know what that says about me or what doesn't, that doesn't say about me, I don't know. Traditional silk tie, again, fabric apparently matters. Um, yeah, uh, this one is a hot topic of debate. Should the tip reach above the belt or below the belt? A lot of debate on this one. Personally, I think the tip of the tie should top touch the top of the belt because otherwise this thing's just like flippy floppy and loosey and just looks weird and overdone so my opinion go to the top of the belt there is some debate on that okay uh, color coordinate that coordinates with suits obviously this one hurts this one hurts me in my being because uh, personally I love fun socks I think it's a great way to convey your personality or highlight something unique about you. And then these uh, navy wing point shoes are so sweet. They're so nice. And th that's a nice up cuff slack pant there. So I, you know what, I just, <laughs> um, I, I blatantly disagree with this one. I'm just gonna throw that out there. And we'll talk about why in a sec. Okay, uh, void wearing boots. Again, just, you know, whatever. I'm gonna let you guys read this. Okay. All right, well, you get the gist of it. Basically, if you wanna be extra safe in an interview and you aren't sure how to dress, dress as vanilla as humanly possible is pretty much what the general guidelines, the safe guidelines and recommendations are. Because if you dress vanilla, there is no risk that what you're wearing could distract from your messaging or your brand. However, doing so also washes out your personality, your authenticity, your true authentic self. Now, as I mentioned before, if you're going into a law firm or you're going into corporate finance or something like that, some of those very high profile, black tie, formal, business positions, then absolutely this is what you should wear. But not because it's safe, but because that is on brand for that industry and on brand for that position. So let's go back to dressing your brand. So now we're gonna do a little activity, okay? To highlight this idea that it is better to not dress safe, but better to dress your brand. And let me explain through some examples. We'll go to this individual, okay? She's wearing a tan jacket. It's kind of a crossover mix of a traditional blazer. It's a little bit longer, kind of like a coat blazer type mix. She looks like she has some nice white slacks on here and then a typical blouse underneath. First question I'll ask you is, does this look unprofessional to you at all? Could be yes, could be no. You could say, well, it depends. It depends on what she's applying for. But in general, when you look at this, you would say, well, that actually looks very professional. That would, that would work for just, just about any job interview. And what I love about it specifically is if this is her style, if this is how she dresses to present herself as a professional, I love it. The brand communicates what to you. When you look at an individual who, are, who is standing in this way with those types of clothes, how would you describe them? What, wor what three words would you pick for this individual's brand? I definitely would not put unprofessional 
or unready or unqualified because of what she's wearing here. Let's, get, let's check out a few more examples. This gentleman here. Oh, let me fix that. There we go. Get that cursor out of the way. Go. Perfect. Okay, this gentleman here. Is this unprofessional? He's got some loafers on, some khaki, tan, almost bamboo pants with a nice belt, button-up shirt tucked in, no tie, got that light powder blue. What do you think? Does it look good? Is it professional? What brand words would you use for this individual? What do you think? Let me ask you another question. What industry do you think this individual works in? If this was a student, what major would they potentially be in? The reason I ask is because this brand, this attire, what this individual is wearing is very typical of an IT type job. You've got, you've, it's not the classic black and white suit, but you've got the tan pants that are nicer, but not necessarily slacks, and then the button up blue shirt. That, I mean, that just screams IT, right? Maybe coding or programming. Now, when I say some of that, there are some of you who's like, oh no, it's even more informal than that. It's not even a button up, it's just a t-shirt with some jeans. And that's true, because there are a lot of tech companies where the culture and the brand is against the grain or against tradition. We're gonna innovate, we're gonna be creative, we're gonna be new, and they express that even in how they choose to dress when they come to work. So if you went to a startup company, I'm getting ahead of myself, I actually have a really good example of this coming up, so hold on to that thought. But just one more time, if, if this individual is applying to a company where everybody else in that company wears attire similar to this, well, that per individual is probably gonna feel already like they fit in. And that's something that you need to care a lot about. Guys, quick side note here. Recruiters and hiring managers, they care about two things. Truly, everything is reduced to two things. Your qualifications, your experience, your skills, your soft skills, your emotional intelligence, all of that is usually summed down into two things that a recruiter or hiring manager are looking for. One, are you going to be a problem? So in your interview, if you can demonstrate that you won't be a problem to the company, boom, you've just knocked out about half of the other applicants, okay? Number two, the second thing they are looking for is will you fit in with the team? Will you be enjoyable to work with? Will you understand the values and the vision and the direction of that team? So for the first one, how do you demonstrate you're not a problem? You demonstrate how you have these skills, you show how you are qualified through your credentials, maybe you have a portfolio that you show that demonstrates your value, perfect, done. In that same interview, you have to differentiate yourself by showing how you can fit in to that team's culture, into that team's mission, and that team's values. So, let me move on to the next one, let me move on to the next one. Here's another individual who's going to a job interview. At first glance, you might think, well, this is probably not the most professional attire. This is probably not going to work for most interviews. And I would say in general, that's probably accurate. However, this individual is applying to an environmentally forward nonprofit organization that tries to get corporations to become more eco-friendly and to take better care of the environment and the communities that they are a part of. They identify as against the grain. They identify, the whole team, the whole direction of it is we can't keep doing what we've been doing, we need new innovative ideas, and we need to move forward. And so nobody at the company wears suits and ties, you know, skirt suits and one inch, one and a half inch pump heels. No, they're, they're dressing like this. Okay, so in that interview, this individual shows up wearing this type of attire and they say, hey, I've got some great ideas on how we can market these ideas to different corporations that generally aren't eco-friendly. And let me give you a, a list of why. When I worked at XYZ Incorporated, I did A, B, and C 7,000 times and got 10 million impressions and blah, 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 blah. And what I'd like to do is project that forward into this company by applying this boom, boom, boom. 
And this individual is just coming out swinging. Do you think that would help her if she is matching the brand, matching the image, the attire of others in that company? Or how distracting would it be if she was wearing a skirt suit with neutrals and one and a half inch pump heels, etc.? It's so much more about dressing your brand, what is authentic to you, and then also conveying that part of you in alignment with that company and their brand and their team and their culture and values. Basically what I'm telling you is this, going back to week one when we discussed purpose, mission, value, money, you remember that whole thing? Ideally you're going to be working in an industry and at a company that fits your values. And that's why you can dress your brand when you are going to those companies. Because I'm telling you right now, you're not gonna be happy in your career and subsequently in life. That's 40 years on average. But honestly, our generation and millennials and Gen Z and Gen Alpha, it is way less likely that they're gonna be able to retire at 60. So if we are gonna be spending the bulk of our lives working, we wanna make sure it's at least with a company that believes in what we believe, that has the same values that we have. And therefore, if we can demonstrate those values through our brand, and we match up like that in a job interview, mm, perfect. Love, love, love that. Obviously, you do need to class up what you genuinely wear because you are showing effort. And that, that would be the other caveat that I throw into this. Make sure that you are demonstrating effort in what you are wearing. It's not just thrown together. And again, in this example, you can see she looks very, like she, she showed up today. You know what I'm saying? She put in the effort to look nice and to dress well for this interview. So let's look at the next example. This individual is wearing a beanie, has a couple accessories, some Ray-Ban style glasses, it's got a nice trimmed beard. What do you think? Now most students say this, they say, you know what, I think if he was just going into work, this is great, especially if it's a tech job, you can see him working on a Mac computer, kind of fits that aesthetic, fits that vibe, totally get that. But then I, I heard some people say, but just lose the beanie. And again, in general, I 100% agree. If you're going into a job interview, you probably shouldn't wear a beanie. You should get that, that hair or nice looking, and, or uh, in my case, just clean shaved, right? But what if this company manufactures eco-friendly beanies that donates $10 from every sale to underprivileged communities to give them better education and resources? Okay, it's another nonprofit, or if it is for profit, they have a mission to give back. And so this individual is wearing one of the beanies that they sell. Poo! That is gonna set you apart in a big way. If there were five applicants, all equally qualified, and four of them showed up in suits, and the fifth one showed up like this, wearing the beanie, the actual product of that company, they're gonna be remembered. They're going to stand out. And that second question that I said, are you going to be a problem? And will you fit into this team? This is almost a standout. Easily. Yeah, Psh, he basically works here already. Let's keep going. I'm going to give you a scenario. And I want you to think, and maybe even write down. Just one sec, i got to grab myself a drink here. What would you do if you were a hiring manager? Who would you hire based purely on appearance? So you're a social media manager with the goal of targeting millennial or Gen Z consumers in the retail market. This is the first candidate that you see. What are the first few brand words that come to your mind? Okay, professional, Effortful, disciplined, punctual, perhaps. There's a whole bunch of words that can come to mind. Now remember, we're trying to get a marketing manager that knows how to target millennial and Gen Z consumers in the retail market. 
So this person's qualifications are the exact same as this person's. She shows up to the interview as well. So let me ask you, if they have all the same qualifications, who would you hire and why? What were some of the brand words that came up for her? Now, I love the debate that we get in class, and I, I wish so badly we could have a virtual class where we could have some more interfacing and dialogue about this, because almost always in my in-person classes, there is a pretty strong debate between who, would you, you, who you would hire based purely on appearances, all qualifications equal. I won't dive into all the specifics, but you can use your own logic and reasoning to make cases for both. Maybe this individual is, better, is a better manager of people. Maybe they'll be able to keep people more accountable and responsible. Maybe they'll be better at reaching deadlines. They will show up on time to every meeting, clock in at the right time. Again, this is purely based on looks, which is a hilarious thing to do, but we make those assumptions within the first three seconds of meeting somebody, so we just have to be real about what, how the real world is. Okay, so she might be better for all of those things. However, this individual might be better at the creative process. Maybe she's more in touch, more in tune with what is the most popular or at least at the forefront of what's coming next. And so with that predictive analysis, they can highlight products or do better marketing to engage the target audience. She might not be on time or she might not have the same punctuality or managing skills or leadership skills as the first candidate, but maybe she understands the process a lot better. Maybe the overarching outcomes will be better. And those were kind of the, the, the main cases back and forth. Would you rather have someone reliable, punctual, serious, professional, or someone more fun, engaging, creative, abstract? And the answer is, it's whatever you want as a hiring manager. And that's maybe one of the most important key aspects of this, is understanding your audience. Can you do any type of research to understand what your hiring manager that you're interviewing with cares about, wants, is searching for? Maybe there's a gap in their team and there's some way you can do some early research, contact somebody in the company through LinkedIn to find out what maybe the team is looking for. And how can you highlight and convey those parts of you that can fill that role in your appearance and brand? Because again, if it were me, and I knew that there are a ton of creatives on this team, they're all having a blast, and I love that, I love our team's fun, energetic nature, but I do need somebody who can meet deadlines and keep everybody on track, so I'm gonna hire her, based purely on appearance. Or, I've got a whole bunch of people who are super logic and data and analytics, and they're great at telling me what the traffic is on our website, how many millennials and Gen Z are coming to our platform and from where, and they give me all this data, but they don't really know how to interpret that into a meaningful message for our future customers or current customers. And so I need a creative, I need someone artistic to come in and really weave in that balance of color along with pragmatism. So that's who I would hire based on that scenario. And your hiring managers and recruiters are also in this state of mind. Uh, we have a few more examples. I'm not gonna spend too much more time uh, on, on these two. Let's just go straight to the brands of other individuals in, the, in popular business media. So here you have Elon Musk, okay? If you zoomed in, you would see that this is a blue velvet jacket. This is anything but conventional. It's a great fashion spin on the traditional blazer. He has a checkered shirt that buttons up, but he doesn't only have the top one unbuttoned, he has the second unbutton as well, showing a little bit more of that uh, billionaire chest. If you also notice, he's just got like a standard bell buckle here. I'm guessing he wore some slacks that were blue. Everything's blue, SpaceX. The branding of that was all blue. So it makes sense, okay? This would definitely not fit into the, the safe branding that we talked about at the beginning of this lecture. But this guy, love him or hate him, he has a brand. He often wears these... Um, 
bandanas as well. It's very identifiable for him. So now we're going to go over here. This is Steve Jobs, the inventor of the iPhone and the iPod and uh, just a brilliant innovator and brilliant marketer, might I add. He was one of the first to pioneer away from that traditional shirt, tie, suit, slacks. He showed up with blue jeans, no belt, and a black turtleneck all the time. And anytime you saw somebody wearing a black turtleneck and blue jeans, you would instantly think, oh, that's Steve Jobs. Because he was an innovator. He wanted to convey that in his brand. He wanted the world to know, hey, I, I don't do it like they've done it. And if you don't want to do it like they've done it, you want to be new, you want to be on the forefront, you want to be innovative, hey, well, come join, come join me. And look at me. I'm not a stiff. I'm not a suit. Let's go have some fun. That was Steve Jobs conveying his brand through his attire in a professional setting. Do you know who these two individuals are? They're not famous globally, perhaps, but they are well-known locally. This is Dr. Julie Hanks. She's a mental health expert focusing a lot on Utah culture and society and helping overcome some of the challenges that might have happened in individuals or couples or families growing up in Utah. Now, her brand is hope. It's healing. It's compassion and love and kindness. And I think her attire reflects that. What brand words come to your mind when you see Dr. Julie Hanks? And I would never say this is unprofessional. And she's at the highest levels of mental health profession because she's a researcher and a publisher as well as a clinician. So yeah, she is absolutely dressing non-conventionally while also dressing professionally. Now, I hope all of you know who this is because if you don't, that's all right. This is our president of Utah Valley University, Dr. Astrid Tuminez. And she is an incredible powerhouse. She has been an ambassador for the United States to Russia. She has worked on Wall Street. She has also been the vice president of operations over the Asian continent for Microsoft before coming to UVU and becoming UVU's first female president. She is a powerhouse. She's amazing. And I love her brand. Her attire is always so professional. It's so classy, but it has just the right flair of her personality, her quirkiness, her energy, her love for life in addition to being successful, being serious, being accountable, all of those different things that she cares about as the president of this university. So if you look here, she is wearing a couple pieces of, of jewelry in addition to a non-conventional jacket with, with a really cool pattern. You probably can't see it in this video, but there's some rhombus diamond shapes on there. And then she's got a tweed or linen looking dress underneath. Really, really classy, very professional, but also has flavor. It has personality in with it. This was her at a uh, interview with KSL, I believe, or maybe it was Good Morning, Good Day Utah or something like that. Anyway, she's wearing faux fur with a green turtleneck. I love it. What a bold move. You're the president of a university and you're going to show this type of character. It's almost like there's a Wolverine wrapped around her neck here. Love it. Let's keep looking at some other examples here. I love this one. It shows some of her traditional Asian culture. She is from the Philippines. And so this is more of that traditional Asian dress. Lots of beautiful flowers on it, but it's still got that green emphasis. Every, almost everything she wears has a little bit of green. And even though it's a pale green here with some... Uh, pink or carnation color interwoven. She's got lots of accessories here, probably three or four bracelets, a nice watch. But here we have more of that traditional uh, stocking. But then if you look at these shoes, those are definitely bigger than one and a half inch. And they're, they're a little bit stronger. They're a little bolder. I love it. It's such a good modern take on a traditional or conventional professional attire. This is also one of my favorites. This, I think, was from a university address where she was interfacing with faculty and students. Again, this was recorded. This was professional. This was broadcasted live. She's wearing a red suit 
with a white and black scarf that has leaf print on it. She's got some green earrings here and then the green beads. Now some fashionistas out there would critique this, this pairing of colors. I personally also don't love the, the green and the red. It's, it clashes a little bit, but it's never gonna stop her. This brand, this is who she is. She's unapologetic about it. If you see, there's a little bit of like leopard print on her glasses with non-black rims. That's awesome. That is so out there for someone who is supposed to be in that super duper professional, serious position. No, she brings that character, that flavor, that brand of her own to it. Uh, this is the last one. This was her presenting at Utah Valley University again. I think this might have been freshman convocation. But I just love this. She, ha she does have that suit skirt or uh, rather just like a, a professional looking skirt. I'm sure she did have tights there, but it's this cross checkered pattern. She has this really cool, uh, not quite flannel, but it does have that flannelish texture jacket zipped up to the top with a big, bold green flower scarf. She loves wearing scarves and she's got, uh, I think, I believe she has some earrings on as well, but there are her leopard print glasses again. It's such a good balance of professionalism and character. It embodies those values that, that UVU has. We're serious, we're professional, we get it done, and we love to have fun, we love to be creative, we're forward thinking, we're not gonna take ourselves too seriously, we're gonna have a good time. And I just think she does such a good job of showing that is who she is, and that is what the university is about, and her brand and the values of the university blend so well it's so cohesive and it's so effective. And so that's what I'm hoping you are thinking about moving forward. This is the last one I'll show. It's her at a wrestling tournament. It's super duper fun. Probably the most professional out of all the outfits. This is a black uh, conservative front jacket with, with buttons up, a green long skirt with stockings. But look, she's got the pom-poms in her hand. She's going crazy with them. And if you see here, she actually has dyed her hair green. I swear to you, there has never been a professor in the Woodbury School of Business that says, yeah, you should dye your hair green when going to an interview. But let me just tell you, if she showed up to her interview with a green streak in her hair applying to work at UVU, that shows a love and a connection. And I'm not, I'm not recommending it all the time. I think it's a little bit of extreme measure. She probably did dye it after she was hired, but I'm just saying, I love that. I love showing that character, that personality in your dress and attire. So what that means, let me go back here for dressing your brown. Yeah, I want you to think about all everything that we just talked about, okay? And I want you to think about what you are applying for. So in your mock interviews this week, I need you to dress in the attire that is similar to the company that you have been preparing your interview questions for and have been preparing just for the mock interview for. Because that is how you should professionally dress. What should you wear to an interview? You should research the company, see what their colors and brand are, try to match that as best you can in your own attire, and then if you can, Try and find somebody who works there, call them, ask them, or message them, text them, email, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever. DM them on Instagram. Just find out, hey, what do you wear at work? And then class it up just a smidge. So let me give you an example. I chose to wear this attire for this lecture because when I applied to UVU to be a recruiter, this is what I wore. These are dark green emerald pants with a brown belt and a dark brown button-up shirt, no tie, opened up, sleeves rolled up just like this, okay? I had a watch on, and the reason why, it, and let me tell you, it really was effortful and deliberate in this way. Now, when I went to that interview, everybody on the board, everybody on the panel was wearing suits. And I, I, I admittedly got a little nervous. And then when I left, when, when I arrived and I saw a candidate leave, and then when I left and saw another candidate arrive, they were all wearing traditional white dark clothes, uh, or excuse me, white top, dark pants, traditional attire. 
But see, the position as a recruiter for UVU is to go into high schools and to present. And I wanted to show that side of me, that part of me. And this is what I would choose to wear if I were to do that. So when I, ca I came into the interview, I gave my spiel. They actually had us do a, a mock presentation. And I was casual, guys. I was calm, cool, collected. I fortunately actually knew one of the individuals I, who were part of the panel. And so it kind of made me feel a little bit more comfortable. Like, oh, yeah, I remember uh, when we both came to UVU back in the day. You know, we kind of had that connection. And so I would just, I would make jokes and, and just be myself, honestly. And when they would ask me a question, I would just shoot, be a straight shooter, keep it concise, keep it pithy, do a little bit of a story for when they asked about a tough situation or whatever it might be. But I spoke in the way that I speak. I wasn't trying to ever answer their questions in the way that I thought they wanted me to answer. I was just being myself. Because I have confidence, remember self-efficacy from last week? I have confidence in my ability to connect with people and I'm confident in my ability to deliver a presentation. And that's what I knew they were looking for in this interview. And so I came into it with that energy. I showed those parts of me through my brand. And even though I didn't wear a suit, just like everybody else on the panel, and just like everybody who came before and after me, I got hired to be a recruiter at Utah Valley University. Now, when I, when I applied to be a professor at UVU, I wore something very similar. Instead of this, I wore a green button-up shirt, unbuttoned on top, but I did wear a dark brown blazer over the top of it, and I was trying to bring a little bit more of a professorial appearance because I knew that was the position I was applying for. But I didn't go traditional conventional because I still felt like this is who I am, this is the way that I, I look and talk and act, and if that's not who you want, I'm okay with that. But let me show you what the best of me is and why it's different, why it's unique, and why it might be better than some more of the traditional options, if you would. And they hired me. Hence why I'm standing here before you delivering this presentation. So it's not just higher education. It is very much this way across sectors, across industries. And you'll watch in some of the videos that you're going to watch this week where you will see some of these elements come up over and over and over. So just to recap real quickly, dress your brand. That's why it's so important in the beginning weeks to identify what is that brand? How do you want to differentiate yourself? And how can you make your appearance and your attire convey that? So another good example for me is I have tattoos. I have, I have a sleeve tattoo right here. And in general, I don't hide the very top. I could, and that was a strategic decision, I'll be honest with you. I, uh, and maybe I'll scoot closer here for you. So when I roll my sleeves up, you can't see it, right? And in some contexts, I really don't want my tattoos to distract from the purpose of that meeting. Remember we talk about strategic objective a lot. What's the strategic, strategic objective of being interviewed on this podcast? Or the strategic objective of connecting with this individual? If it's not about me at all, I don't want to really share or convey that part of me, especially if I want the emphasis and focus to be on something else or someone else. However, if I am trying to show that I am a combination of professional and also character, personality, passion, etc., I'm trying to convey a little bit of who I am in a professional setting, I will show just a smidge of my tattoo. And what's great is, combined with the watch, it's almost unnoticeable. But here's the really cool thing, is in the professional world, if the person I'm interfacing with, which is actually quite common, I know it's a little less common here in Utah, but even still here in Utah in the business world, there are tons of people who have tattoos, but like me, they'll usually conceal them in professional settings because they don't want to be perceived as something that they're not. They want to, again, be on brand and to connect with people. And if they feel like the values aren't aligned there, they, they won't want that represented. And that can be shown across multiple things. I and mean, it's not just specific to tattoos. It could be, I don't know, like you wouldn't wear a sports uh, emblem. Like if I'm a huge Warriors fan, I wouldn't wear the Warriors garb to the Utah Jazz Stadium if I'm meeting with the Utah Jazz to do business. 
even though if that is like the most professional attire I have, it, that, that's kind of what I'm saying is you just don't want to distract from the strategic objective. But if I show just a smidge of that and they also have tattoos, they'll immediately connect with me on it. Oh, hey, do you mind if I ask you about your tattoo? Yeah. And then I'll, I'll pull up the sleeve and then we'll, I'll talk about this. I'll talk about that, this, this piece of it. And then if the, I'll obviously inquire them, say, oh, tell me about yours. And then they'll share their story and their history. And boom, that is such an immediate human connection that is so, so awesome. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not telling any of you to go out and get tattoos. Please, that is like an extremely personal <laughs> uh, decision. But what I'm saying is don't hide parts of who you are physically or uh Figuratively, that's the word. Do not hide parts of who you are figuratively or physically, especially if you feel like that will help you create a greater connection with that person. One of my favorite examples of this is Dr. Huberman. If you're familiar with him, he's a Stanford neuroscientist and ophthalmologist who publishes a lot of information about health and wellness and the brain and, and psychology and all these different things. And he always wears a charcoal button-up shirt that covers his arms entirely. Now, he is a Stanford University professor at the highest level. Researcher, faculty member, all that, right? He has full sleeves. And I love his answer. His answer honestly kind of inspired me. He said, I don't show my tattoos because I don't want them to distract from the message, which is so much more important than what that is. So that's the balance you're looking for. Is conveying my personality in my accessories, in my hairstyle, in my demeanor, in, even in the way that you talk and interact, it's okay to bring different parts of your personality into those interactions as long as it doesn't distract from the strategic objective. I know that's, I, I'm kind of running in circles here, but I really want to hit this home because I don't want you to play it safe with just doing what has conventionally, traditionally been vanilla ice cream flavored. Bring your color to that interview, to that interaction, that elevator pitch, that networking conference. When you go on a date or when you are interacting with new people, whatever it might be, bring your uniqueness, that differentiating factor that you have and demonstrate it and portray it. And if you don't know what that is yet, that's totally fine. Just start looking around, try and explore and, and discover what it is that you like and what things represent you in a great way. Again, I love my smartwatch. I'm a tech guy. I love technology. I like that it tracks things and I like that it gives me a lot of data about my day-to-day -day life and my health and all that stuff like that. And I like that when somebody else sees that watch and they get it and they understand, I can make an immediate connection with them. But if I just played it safe with no watch or, or you understand what I'm saying, that opportunity to connect and really have a human relationship would be missed. So try to find the good balance for you. What is your corporate trajectory? What is important to you personally, your values, your personality, your color, all that. And how, how do you want to tie those two together and show that you are a good fit for this team, that you do have the same values and that the mission that you are on is in alignment with that company's mission? Now, when we talk about investing, which is its own conversation, to be honest with you, the ethos, remember the character that you are conveying to your investors needs to be one of confidence, assuredness, practicality, honesty, trustworthiness. Those are other characteristics that are so much more important to investors. So you want to make sure that your attire, again, doesn't distract from that. Do, will that cause an investor to question your validity? Because maybe they are from a more traditional generation and they are looking for people that they can relate to and connect with, which may not be a lot in the younger community. But you can make that connection by dressing Kind of like how President Tuminez does, a very professional, conventional attire with the nice notes and accessories and accents of personality and color. So that's, that's my recommendation to you. That is what has served me and many, many of my professional associates 
especially in today's modern world. And again, this is a marketing class, so I do tailor this to marketing majors, but business majors in general, this is a very forward progressing industry and generation and the conventions generally aren't gonna cut it. We do need to do our research, we need to tailor what we do and we need to pick those parts of our brand that match that company's and bring it all together for our interviews. So with that being said, let's head on over to the assignments in the live stream recording.